To some people, the L15 found in newer Civics is considered to be the worst engine Honda ever made. Now, my car is engine swapped, and this is a K-series, but the old L15 that came in the stock Civic Si is right there, and people aren't exactly wrong when they say that, because simply put, they just don't build them like they used to. And the old motors are known for holding a ton of power, being super reliable, and we're seeing these new Honda engines fail at a much higher rate. And that is simply because, well, the motors are designed for economy. You know, it's great getting 40 plus miles per gallon, but they are only good up until a certain limit. And this now begs the question, is it worth it to modify the 10th gen Civic Si? Well, let's talk about it. I'm sure many of you either own one of these, are interested in them, or some of you might just watch my videos because you like car content. Either way, as majority, we are car enthusiasts, and as car enthusiasts, we like to modify cars, right? We like to make them faster, more fun, but I'll answer the question right now. Is it worth it to modify these cars? Yes and no. As someone who has owned this car since new in 2020, I put on over 60,000 miles. My first tune was at 3,000 miles. I've had a big turbo for over 40,000 miles and majority of that was spent on track. So I believe I have enough experience to share my opinion and my experience with this car to try and help people make better decisions when it comes to this platform. So what this video is going to be about is what I would do if I had to do it over. And just to be clear, if I had to do it over, I really wouldn't do it differently just because everything to me was a learning experience and to many people I get this a lot. They want to work on their car but they're intimidated and you know they don't know where to start. When I first got this car I got my oil changed at the dealer. I had pretty much zero experience with cars. My door got scratched once and I said you know what I'm doing my oil change myself. And from then on it turned into a chain reaction where I kept modifying it and three years later here I am doing an engine swap. So don't feel intimidated. And here, I'm gonna give a list uh, from what I have learned that I'll share with you of the mods that I would go with, what I think is worth it, what I think is not worth it, and what is really the best bang for your buck when it comes to this platform. I was watching this back and I wanna make one thing clear. I'm not trying to hate on the 1.5. That's not my goal this video. My experience with the 1.5 was amazing. I loved the engine, I loved every second of it. I got so much track time without any issues. It is a great, great engine if you know the limits of it, and that's my point. If you know what you're getting into and you know what it is and you know what you're doing and you take care of it, it is a great engine. So I just want to put that out there. Just a quick disclaimer, I can only give my opinion on the brands I've had experience with. There's a lot of brands that are good out there. There's a lot of brands that aren't so good. So I'll tell you who I've had experience with, who I enjoy, just because I might not mention your favorite brand. I'm sure there are, again, a lot of other good ones out there. And also, in terms of your goals, everybody's goal is going to be different when they're building their car. For me, this is going to be what I would consider the fun daily driver that is again dailyable, but you could occasionally maybe take it to the track and it's just an overall fun car to drive and what I think is the best value for the money. I'm gonna start here with everybody's favorite, of course, engine mods. I listed these in generally the order of priority, but you know, there's, there is no real order to it for the most part. Starting off, I have a K-Tuner. So K-Tuner is gonna be your tuning software. Getting a tune on the car, just a simple flash tune, you're gonna notice a difference. It's gonna give you way more options to customize the parameters within the computer. And their other option is Hondata. As far as I know, for the SI, uh, maybe not the Type R, but the SI K-Tuner is better than Hondata. So what I would recommend, I have the K-Tuner V2, the version 1.2 is also great, but you're gonna need some sort of tuning software. Next upgrade I have on here is an upgraded clutch. Now, to people that are new and not familiar, that might sound like a lot, but the clutch is one of the Achilles heels on this car, along with a few others, but the clutch will start slipping at even stage one or two type tunes. So you're gonna need a clutch if you're planning on going to the higher horsepower. You can push off the clutch further down the range, you start modifying your car and you're pushing more power, you can wait till it starts slipping, but expect a clutch upgrade. My recommendation, who I have experience with again, is ACT. Uh, I want the single mass flywheel too, and it, it makes your revs a lot faster. Overall, just a little more pedal feel. It's a much nicer clutch. So consider a clutch upgrade. After that, I have the PRL Cobra race math intake. Uh, I have all these parts somewhere, hold on. I have at least part of the intake here, but what's cool about this is it would run all the way down into the corner of the bumper to try and get colder air. 
I know 271, I'll shout out that company as well. I have a lot of PRL parts. My experience with PRL is great. They're a good company, but I know 271 makes a really good intake as well. And they have a similar design, but the filter's on the top, but it still sucks air from the bottom. Uh, intake is great. You're gonna get really cool intake noise. These cars are known for making a lot of intake noise when you put an intake on them. So intake, really fun for the money. Next mod, of course, a catback. Any exhaust, I have the Skunk 2. I think it's really underrated. I love the sound of it, but I would recommend, I'll say, an exhaust with mufflers and a resonator, especially if you're gonna go to one of the next mods I mentioned, a downpipe, because it might sound okay with no mufflers, but then you get to a downpipe, which is what happened to me, and uh, it became too much. So you might want an exhaust with ref muffler and res if you're going to do a full exhaust with a downpipe. So again, following up, I have a Purell downpipe, Purell front pipe, I have the Catless. Uh, they're a little bit harder to get now, but you know, you can look around, RV6, I know also makes some really good downpipes, front pipes. Next mod I have on here is an intercooler and charge pipes. This is from PRL. Uh, also, a lot of these parts I'm showing, I am selling all the old SI parts if you wanna mess with me on Instagram. This one comes with spiders for free, no extra charge. But this front pipe, or sorry, charge pipes, intercooler are not necessarily uh, essential, but if you're gonna be doing a lot of pools, if you're on track, when you do pools back to back, you start to get heat soak. And at that point, that's when you might wanna consider something like this. Hasport rear motor mount. Now, I do have the Hasport one, but I also had experience with, I think Perrin made an insert for the stock rear motor mount. But you wanna consider a rear motor mount upgrade. I know 271 makes one. It's gonna make a huge difference. Uh, it might not be for everybody though on this mod because you might get a little bit of a vibration it's gonna cause a NVH, noise, vibration, and harshness. So you're gonna feel it a little more depending on how aggressive of a rear motor mount you go with. So it's something to consider, but it'll help a lot with the wheel hop. So when you're launching on a front wheel drive car, you'll notice sometimes you get that bouncing, especially in the rain. Uh, it's gonna help a lot. And it, it, I personally like the vibrations and the harshness because it feels more race car per se. But uh, again, it's something to think about depending on how far and the comfort level you're looking for. PRL flex fuel kit, if you want to run ethanol, it is an absolute cheat code. Uh, you don't have to run it. And what's cool is as flex fuel, you can put in regular gas and then you can pour in your ethanol and the computer is going to compensate no matter what you do. Some car platforms, you have to switch tunes to change to an ethanol tune, which is ridiculous because on these, it's so nice. The computer does all the work for you. Pour in some ethanol when you want it, you gain 30, 40 horsepower. And then when you don't need it, you don't need it. So E85, Flex fuel kit is a really good upgrade. Here is one of the most important upgrades that people will not talk about is upgraded head studs. I have the ARP head studs and I can't recommend them enough because another major flaw with these engines is the head gasket. The head gaskets are known to fail with bigger turbos, higher cylinder pressures. Mine blew at I think 48,000. And I think a lot of that was because I spent so much time on track all that time at high RPM caused it to wear a lot faster. But if you put in your head studs, and I can vouch that this works, I've done it for a customer on Adam Civic. Uh, you can put in the head studs one by one without removing the head. So you take the valve cover off, change the head studs one by one. That'll save your head gasket. It's been working on his car fine. And it is a very important upgrade if you're planning on tracking your car and pushing it hard. Uh, to some people, it's one of those things you kick it down the road, you don't need it. I'm telling you now, you're gonna regret it if you don't do it, and then it ends up happening. So. Head studs is on the list if you plan on going to this next mod especially, an upgraded turbo. I ran an RV6 turbo, 271 also makes great turbos I know. Uh, it's so much more fun with an upgraded turbo. That'll, uh, it'll really change the power band especially and you'll feel it pull more at the top end. You'll have more higher end horsepower. Instead of the stock turbo kind of falls on its face after you know 6,000 RPM. It's just so much more fun with a bigger turbo. You get more sounds. And all of these mods combined will get you to the low 300 horsepower mark, which is what I consider the reasonable limit at, of this engine transmission and drivetrain. And I'll talk about that more at the end. Next set of mods is going to be suspension. So first thing I would do is either springs or coils. And a lot of people are gonna hate on springs, but I've ran both. I ran springs for a while. Springs are amazing on this car, especially because you have electronic dampeners. So a lot of people don't want to deal with, you have to put in a, an electronic sensor canceller if you change to a coilover setup. Springs are a really cheap, easy way to lower your car, change the feel of the handling. The only reason I switched to coilovers is because I could run a more aggressive wheel setup and I could run a more camber in the front. 
and also because I'm on track, so I'm dialing in dampening. But to most people, you're really not gonna need coilovers to be completely honest. Next mod I have is when this follows up with anything, you're gonna lower the car. Camber arms, a lot of people will also ignore this, but in the rear, you're gonna get a lot of camber, negative camber in. Some people don't care, but if you wanna be able to adjust your camber from lowering the car, you're gonna need camber arms. So that's another one I'd recommend. In terms of wheels, I'm running an 18 by nine and a half, plus 40 was a big tire. A lot of people will run an eight and a half or a nine. Uh, oh, sorry, it's a big wheel. I'm running a 255 wide tire. So it is a big setup again for track. Uh, that is a pretty aggressive one. And again, I have coilover so I can get more camber so I can run those bigger wheels. But those are the two primary ones I'll say right there. Suspension and wheels. That's really all you need. It's gonna change the look and the feel of the car entirely. Uh, there's mosquitoes everywhere. After that, I have sway bars and end links. Primarily in the rear, if you wanna change the front sway bar, you have to drop the subframe. That's a good one to do while you're doing the clutch. Some people don't even like the feel of a front sway bar. In my case, I have Eibach front and rear sway bars and end links. You're gonna want the end links because they're adjustable. So depending on your ride height, you can adjust how much uh, preload is on those sway bars. That is a great one. Again, just, just throwing in an upgraded rear sway bar alone will totally change the feel of the car as the way it oversteers. Really good upgrade. Another one that actually, this should be really high up because this is one of the best upgrades I've ever done. And that is the QD short shifter. Short shifter in this, you think about it, you're gonna get in your car, every day you're touching the shifter. Having an upgraded short shifter makes the car so much more enjoyable to drive. It's a good shifter from factory, but having the Acuity one, especially with all the adjustability in it, so, so nice to drive with. Really, really good upgrade. Another part from Acuity is the pedal relocate. So this is again for more of you track guys or guys that are really into spirited driving. It changes location. You have three options to change location of your throttle pedal. So it's easier to heel toe and do certain downshifts and it's way, way better than factory spacing, again, for heel toe, something to look into. And the last one I have on here, this is not the highest ranking because it's not essential for everybody, but a big brake kit. If you are running on track, this is when you're gonna want that. Uh, on the street, it's not really necessary. God, the mosquitoes. Uh, it's not really necessary to run a big brake kit if you're not on the track, but on track, you definitely need it because the rotors will tend to warp single piston. They don't have much heat they can absorb. They fade fast. It's not a great factory setup. So I would recommend a BBK if you're going on track. That right there is actually the end of my list uh, because those are what I consider to be the main essentials. There are of course gonna be some dress up and cosmetic things you can do. There's, it's always nice to add a front lip or some other small things, you do tint, whatever, but you really don't have to get too crazy. I'm gonna, I can't with the... Those are all the main parts I'd consider. And another note I wanna put out there is just because I know it seems like a lot of parts, you can get a lot of these parts used. That's the great thing about civics because there are so many of them and the community is so big. There's Facebook groups and forums just for selling used parts. If you're patient and there's a part you're looking for, especially, you know, like intake exhaust, a lot of that stuff comes up really often. You'll be able to find a lot of these parts used at a really good price. And once you buy them used, if you ever go to sell it again, it's not gonna really lose any value. And that's also what I should mention about all these parts I mentioned, they're all bolt-on. None of them are crazy modifications. They can all be undone. And uh, so consider used parts. Definitely look for them. If you can find them, get it. I wanna explain again why exactly I said I would stop where I ended that list. That'll get you around the low 300 horsepower mark. And that is what I consider to be the safe limit in my experience and in a lot of other people's experience. When you go above that threshold, you're gonna start seeing problems. The rods in this motor, sorry, that motor are known to be weak. The rods can break, oil pump gears have failed. Transmissions are very common to fail. Actually, I think more so than engines, you have gears shear, third, fourth, second. I think fourth is the most common. You see transmission failures. Getting to the 400 horsepower benchmark on the 1.5 is an extreme feat. It's gonna take a lot of money, it's gonna take a lot of time. To get past the level that I mentioned, you're gonna possibly need a bigger turbo, you're gonna need an upgraded fuel system, you're going to need a built engine, and you're gonna need a built transmission. If you don't build either the engine or the transmission, I can guarantee you it's not gonna last long. Again, especially if you're on track and you're really pushing it, it's just not a good idea. So you're gonna put in a lot, a lot, a lot of time and money and still end up with a platform that 
sorry to say, isn't great. It's just not a good high horsepower platform. So if you are chasing horsepower, I would tell people just, you know, buy a Coyote, put a turbo on it. You know, turbo V8 is gonna be way cheaper and faster all day. So you have to know what you're getting into. This is not the platform for horsepower, but it is still an amazing platform. And at that low 300 horsepower mark, that is so much fun to drive. It is still a light car, so it's a blast to drive. I never had issues, in my experience, my reliability was great. All that time on track, the only issue I had was the head gasket. And if I did head studs, I could have prevented that. So having at that level is going to be a lot of fun and it shouldn't give you many problems. For those of you that wanna go further, let's talk. Because I understand also as enthusiasts, we wanna keep upgrading, we want, you're never satisfied with your horsepower, you're never satisfied with your car, uh, so you wanna upgrade. I think the most reasonable upgrade is going to be the Type R. You're getting a way better engine and transmission, better suspension, better platform. It is more different and it is a much, much better upgrade than people realize. The Type R is a great car. I think the record is 680 something horsepower on the stock block. Absolutely insane horsepower they hold. The other similar option would be doing the K-Swap, which I have in this car, but I'm holding off on talking about that because obviously the car's not done yet. So I can't really speak on it until I have my final thoughts. But I will say it is 100% cheaper and it makes more sense than building the L15. You're gonna spend way more money building the L15 and a built L15 is just a 1.5 at the end of the day. The ceiling is so much higher on the two liter. You have so many more options. It's just a way, way better engine all around. I would always want all day engine swap over building an L15. But of course, if you wanna change from the Honda front wheel drive platform, there's other rear wheel drive, uh, V8, whatever engine you want platforms out there. The list I gave you is what I think is the most logical and reasonable way to mod your Civic Si and keep it from blowing up. Now the engine swap is done as in it runs and it could drive, but I already explained the whole situation with my axles and what happened with AKD and the whole issue with that company. Those of you that are following the whole problem that's been going on, uh, the many problems that have been going on, I will be posting an update video once I get all the details, I don't want to spread any rumors or speculation, so I'm only giving an update on the axle situation once I have the facts and what's been going on. Uh, it is, it's still crazy. So Drive Shop Shop is working on my axles. Once those get here, the car will be back on the road. But this is why I'm posting, I haven't done really conversational videos like this in a while. I do like just having what I feel is like a face-to-face -face conversation and to uh, really engage my audience. If you guys like this kind of stuff, let me know. But this is just a video I figured would try to help a lot of people out because I know a lot of you have these cars and you're interested. Uh, so if it does help, please consider liking and subscribing, comment, share your opinion, say whatever you want. Uh, so engine swap content, hopefully soon. Uh, I have another video coming up. I will be doing a video on reviewing my subscribers' cars. I'm really excited for that one. I did it through Instagram. If you guys haven't been following, go to my Instagram, forewarning. Uh, you know, you might get roasted, you might get praised, who knows? But if you wanna be a part of that, follow my Instagram, ton of updates on there. And that is it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.